everybody and welcome back to my channel and if you've never seen my face before then hi my name is Kiva and I'm doing another True Crime Tuesday. Of course I have a hair bubble on my wrist. I'm actually going to walk down the aisle with a hair bubble on my wrist I think. So today's video is going to be a little bit shorter. In this case is insane, I had to do it. There's not much information on it but I'm not like promising anything, I'm not like saying for certain. But maybe this week you might be getting another True Crime video or two. You know it might be like a two-parter. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So yeah, this video is going to be a little bit on the shorter side, but I'll make up for it, I promise. So this video is about this woman, and I feel like I'm going to butcher so many like names in this because I'm not Mexican. This woman's name is Joanna Barraza, I think that's how you say it. Joanna, she was born the 27th of December, 1957. I apologise if you can hear that, I think my name is just no when I'm filming. And I'm like, yeah, let's do all the noise now. I don't even know where I got to. Joanna, she was born the 27th of December 1957 in Mexico. And she was born in like a really rural city, which was just north of Mexico City. So she wasn't really like in civilization or anything. So her mother, Justin San Piero, she was not like a very warm person. She just wasn't a great mother. She like wasn't really the mothering type. She didn't really have that many friends. Her mother, you know, she wasn't a nice person to anyone. Her mother drank a lot of alcohol and she was pretty abusive when she drank and when she wasn't drunk as well. So Joanna did not have the best childhood because she had an abusive mother. So when Joanna was 12, just uh, decided she just had enough and didn't want a daughter. So she sold her to a man for three cans of beer. That doesn't even sound real, does it? Now, this man was also an alcoholic and she basically lived with him for the next five years. And she was literally like a slave for this man. Like, she cooked, she cleaned. It was like Cinderella stuff, but in real life. And I just can't imagine the horror she had with this man because, like, obviously, when you're sold to a man at the age of 12, it's going to be dodgy. But I just want to put a trigger warning in here because I've got to do it at the start. Um, but yeah, there are talks of sexual assault in this case, so just be wary of that. If you will get triggered in any way, then please just click off the video. He used to sexually assault her. So in this man's care, she got pregnant with her first child, and she gave birth to a baby boy. I'm not sure what this boy's name was, but he didn't last very long. So in total, she had four children, and this is kind of like not just in the care of this man, but like with other like men and this was after she moved out in total she had four children and this one that she had with this man who she was sold to he actually died in a mugging when he was very young he was attacked with a baseball bat and died there's not really much information on this and that's kind of all the information i have on like her childhood as well this case just had so little information but i wanted to cover it her second child she was a girl and she got married and she moved out of home pretty early on but like she always stayed close with her mother her three children who stayed alive were very close with their mother she wasn't like her mother was to them you know she was a very good mother to them and in her adult life Joanna she was a wrestler and I found that so interesting so basically her name translated to the lady of silence and in Mexican this is la dama de silencio yeah I told you I'd be butchering Mexican words names she was actually like a professional wrestler and like I don't know how popular wrestling is but like in the wrestling world she had like a pretty good name for herself so you go girl. And there was this one sort of wrestling that she loved and it was called Lucha Libre and this type of wrestling basically was like where you have like kind of the good guy and the bad guy. The good guys they were called the Technicos and they kind of like followed by all the rules you know they were like the good guys who you would like root for and the bad guys their nickname was the Rudos and they just like didn't follow the rules, they just broke all of them and she loved this sort of wrestling so yeah I, I'm not really sure if she like did this sort of wrestling, that's what she did professionally or if she did like a different sort of wrestling, I don't really know much about wrestling, I take a shot every time I say wrestling, but yeah she really liked this type of wrestling. And, like in interviews in the future she always said that she was Rudo to the core so basically saying like I'm bad guy to the core, don't follow the rules. So a really great image she's getting for herself here. Yeah. Obviously she had like a pretty traumatic childhood and she kind of carried this throughout her entire life, this trauma. Understandable whenever your mother is an alcoholic and you're being abused by her for 12 years and she sells you for three cans of beer and you're abused by another man. As you can imagine, she didn't have anything to do with her mother, you know, she 
hated her with a passion. And in the 1990s, this hatred she had for her mother was overwhelming her. And she kind of started targeting elderly women who kind of resembled her mother in a way. And this is kind of what she was known for. She would go around killing elderly women. Like, have you ever heard of a serial killer just killing an elderly woman? Because I find that mental. Now, with like a lot of serial killers, you know, they murder a lot of people, but a lot of them can't like, like fully be connected to them. Like it's kind of thought that they did it, but in a court of law, it's not proven. So the very first crime that was like officially linked to her was in 1998 but it's thought that she was killing way before this and all of her victims were elderly women who lived alone and they didn't really have much contact with the outside world so she knew that like they wouldn't really be missed in a way they were all very vulnerable very like weak and she knew they'd be easy target and she basically had like this pattern so she would find like an elderly woman and she'd offer them help with something you know like offer them help with cooking or cleaning around the house and as soon as she found a way to get into the house and kind of gain their trust enough to like be in the house she would bludgeon them to death most of her victims were strangled but she would also like bludgeon some of them which is just so violent like these women obviously when you're elderly you're a lot weaker you can't defend yourself she was literally going after people just for like the power over them because she knew they couldn't defend them. Now, obviously whenever you've murdered someone you know you can do what you want in their house because there was no one else living with them so she would just go around the house robbing the house and she would also sometimes sexually assault the woman after they died these like had no leads they did not want to believe that there was like a serial killer targeting elderly women because that would terrify the community so the public weren't really warned so the public didn't really know that all these elderly women were being killed so the elderly woman who would be targeted could not like protect themselves because they didn't know. The victims, they did like have relatives and they would try and speak to them but obviously if they didn't have much to do with the person who had died then they're not going to really know much at all. They kind of suspected that the serial killer was kind of disguising as a government worker to gain trust and get into the houses. They thought that maybe the serial killer was offering the victims like sort of welfare and extra money like from the government and they would trust them that way at one point they thought it might be like multiple people working together to kill these people because there was like so many of them happening and this is like a really random thing but this has nothing to do with the killings whatsoever like really but i wanted to talk about it anyway so three of the victims they all had this exact same painting a print of an 18th century painting by french artist jean baptiste Crutes called the boy in a red waistcoat i just find that a bit crazy i'm sure that wasn't what she was targeting them though police believed that the killer was a man who was dressing as a woman because elderly women were like likely to trust women more you know that's kind of what police were thinking they'd be likely to let a woman into the house more than a man they didn't really want to believe that a female was capable of killing people like this because you know females are like gentle and all of that and as well a lot of the victims had been seen with a woman like before they were reported as dead obviously police were looking for a male who was committing these crimes so this gave joanna the chance to like slip under the radar and commit her crimes without getting caught and obviously as more murders took place kind of more reports came in of what people had seen before elderly women had been reported dead and they said it was kind of a masculine looking woman which confirm the police's suspicions even more it was a man and that it was like a quite large man and that this man was like wearing a red blouse and this is what police were looking for. and they kind of drew up like a police sketch and believed it was a man in his 40s or 50s who did not have a permanent job and who would use public transport and their main kind of suspicion was that the killer was a transvestite and there was kind of like a lot of transvestite prostitutes in this area and this is kind of who the police were like targeting most now obviously like prostitutes don't really have the best of reputations in this day and age but in the 90s it was worse so obviously like police naturally were like it's going to be a prostitute and transvestites you know they're very misunderstood and in the 90s it was worse again so police were like transvestite let's go for those because like cross-dressing i think they just wanted an excuse to be like vile judgmental people for no reason and try and get some like innocent people sent down just for the fact that they like dressing as the opposite gender now obviously when they're having all these reports saying it's a woman they kind of had to look into women so basically to do this they went to like the local morgues and they were testing like fingerprints and dna of like suicide victims female suicide victims and comparing it with like dna found at crime scenes because they believed that if it was a woman committing it that this woman would like feel so guilty and bad that she would commit suicide after so that was literally how little respect they had for women they were like if a woman kills she'll feel so guilty that she'll like 
off herself. Now these murders were happening for quite a while, so they started off in the 90s and now I'm going to fast forward to 2006. So it's January 25th, 2006 and Joanna has found her next victim. She had managed to talk her way into the home of 82 year old Anna. And I'm not even going to try and say her full name because it's so long. And this is kind of like near the capital in Mexico, so Mexico City. So once inside Anna's house, she strangled her with a stethoscope. And when she was fleeing the scene, she actually got caught by like a lodger who Anna was the landlady of. So this led the police straight to her and she was actually caught red-handed with the stethoscope, which was the murder weapon, like she had it on her. And she also had like a lot of paperwork on her, like kind of fake government sheets, like pension forms, like welfare slips that kind of confirmed that this was their woman, you know. She was out here killing elderly people with the same, like, motive, you know, she was killing them by strangulation and she had all these forms on her. And obviously the murder weapon had her fingerprints on and they managed to match this to, like, dozens of other crime scenes of these killings of these elderly people. So in police custody, she obviously confessed to the murder of Anna, like, about time, but obviously she did that. And she confessed to the murders of three others, but said that was it and that she didn't kill anyone else. The public was so shocked that it was a female, like, they all thought, you know, it was a man dressing as a woman, and they thought a woman wasn't capable of this, especially Joanna was, like, 48 at the time, you know, and she was out here, like, killing elderly people, and I get, like, elderly people would not be hard to kill, but still, you know, like, damn, like, imagine being that fit at 48 that you can, like, just go around offing people. And she matched the composite sketch so well, she had, like, short, dyed blonde hair, she had, like, a facial mole, like, it was so obvious once they caught her that it was her, so, in her murdering spree, she committed at least 42 murders, but it's thought to be a lot higher, like around 49 or over. Yeah, you heard that right, 42 murders. I just wanna say, Ted Bundy, he was thought to commit 33, so this woman killed more people than Ted Bundy. So her trial began in spring 2008, and basically in Mexico, like, the way they do their trials is really different. So they don't really have like a jury or anything and it's kind of the judge's decision on what happens to the like defendants. It's all like behind closed doors, you know, so there's no like media like in there filming the trial or live streaming or whatever. And the trials can be known to last for years because obviously they have to make sure it's fair and all the evidence is like down. And she changed her story in the trial. She said the only murder she actually did was Anna and that's because she kind of lost her temper at Anna and got a bit angry. But she said that that was it, you know, she didn't kill anyone else. And she told police that kind of Whenever she lost it with Anna, it was kind of also like the hatred for her mother came out and it was kind of like how she was treated in her childhood, like all the anger was being taken out on Anna. That's what she was basically trying to say. It is said that she would use like murder weapons that she carried on her, like tights, phone, cables, wires, stethoscopes to strangle her victims. Now the trial only lasted a few days and on the 31st of March 2008, she was found guilty of 11 counts of murder and counts of burglary as well. And 11 counts was all they could like formally prosecute her for but it is widely thought by like police and everyone that she committed at least 42 like I said probably more than 42 but like they just can't prove that because they don't have the evidence there. She was sentenced to 759 years in prison so safe to say she will never be getting out of prison. In Mexico sentences like this are normally like done together so each murder count should be doing it like at the same time instead of like one after the other but the minimum sentence for first degree murder is 60 years. So she will never get out of jail. She still claims that she only killed Anna and she was kind of used as a scapegoat because they didn't want to admit to the public that they still had a serial killer. They just wanted to kind of dob her in and that be it. And all her children say that she was like an amazing mother to them. And her two youngest children, they were still like living with her at the time of the murders and her arrest. And they went to live with their older sister, the one who I said she moved out when she was quite young and got married. They went to live with her, but all her children still love her and say she's innocent and it is thought that the reason that she targeted these women is she just lost it thinking about her childhood and how she was treated i kind of wanted to do the world like a favor and rid the world of these women because she didn't want them to hurt anyone else like her mother had hurted her so like it was definitely the childhood trauma but that also doesn't excuse it you can't go around murdering people like i get it she had a rough childhood but not everyone who has a rough childhood goes out and starts murdering an elderly woman that's just my opinion so yeah, I think she's a vile woman. You have people that she killed, and she did have a rough childhood, like she couldn't read or write when she was arrested. Like, the world didn't give her the best chance at succeeding when she was born, but she could have done a lot more with her adulthood than become a wrestler and kill people. But yeah, that's all I have in this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. 
and let me know if you're excited for our two-part true crime special coming this week hopefully and yeah i will see you in the next video